Hello, I'm Sarah Conahan with phillyirelandconnection.com, and tonight I'm here at the library in the Commodore John Barry Club, otherwise known as the Irish Center, with three historians, Sean McMenamin to my left, Billy Brennan, and Pat Bonner. How did the Commodore Barry Memorial Library come about here at the Irish Center? The interesting start here, if my recollections are correct, was probably around 1970. We just got out of the army here. I met up with them, a gentleman, Billy Brennan here, and he had a box of books, and we were going to start this idea of sharing books among ourselves here. So we we came about. We had a little closet in, in this room here, and we decided, well, maybe we can expand and find a room here. So we found one of the small rooms over on the side of the building there, the office now. And then all of a sudden we opened up a doorway into this room. And if you can imagine this room in 1970 didn't even have a floor in it. So with the help of people like Patty Bonner and uh, Donahue and Martin Dirk and a lot of them, our deceased members, we, we put this floor in, got this place painted, got the lights from a department store that was changing out, got the ceiling tiles from some other where Joe Montgomery. So Joe Montgomery uh, Bill was yeah. got the ceiling tiles. So basically that's how and then as it expanded over the years then I had Billy fill in the rest here then then we started to get donations of books. And I think if you want to get the defining moment would be when the Eucharistic Congress came here uh, we, with, with Billy's guidance here and with other people, that we were able to put together a fantastic exhibit of the contributions that the Irish and Irish Americans had made, and people realizing that uh, the stereotype was not what was there. We, and with the emphasis on the Irish contribution to literature, from the architect of the White House to the submarine. And, designers of and the baseball, the um, arts and entertainment, the, the, imp, the whole impact that was never really uh, put into the media at the time, you know, we were very much stereotyped, which we sometimes get today, but with Bill's help here, I think in his guidance, we were able to expand our our understanding to the generations of Irish and Irish Americans that really didn't quite grasp the whole contribution from the Civil War, the, 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 the amount of Irish soldiers and the Union Army, you know, the, that whole contribution was never probably recognized by the mainstream here. And I think in the last couple of years we have come a long way. So I let Billy kind of expand how we came to the next level of getting our contributions and with the mission was that we would educate in the arts and culture and the history of the Irish and the contribution of the Irish to world and to the the America along with every other race we we had the contribution that we felt that needed to be told or needed to be explained out here because we were lacking even in the schools, the the contribution of history, and you can probably even refer it to today, like even I see with, with Black History Month and stuff that that was never taught. The same thing was with the Irish; they, they were not mainstreamed into understanding that we all had a major contribution. So that was our understanding that we were part of a big picture, and that our contribution should be recognized. I started to look into the arts. And what I found was, it was like an open up cornucopia type. Uh, I may have had about 10, maybe 12 names. All of a sudden, I ended up with 47 names of uh, Irish artists, 20 some uh, sculptors, major contribute, major, major projects, uh, architects, maybe about uh, 10 architects. So then we, how do we display all this stuff? And we, we did it during the bicentennial over at the and the Eucharistic Congress over at the Civic Center. 
And then we went from there to the, we had about six or seven other exhibits after that. And then the, the, the material was all portable. We, we brought it back. We had everything on slides. We had it on panels. We brought it back here. And that was the basis for for all these uh, these cases you see here, display cases. And then we got our contributions uh, of books from Austin McGrail, who was the first big major one, him and a Dr. Hennessy. The next was uh, Harry, Fitz, Harry Fitzgibbon, uh, fell victim to Alzheimer's. Harry's wife called me up. She said that we had 15 boxes of books. Harry, before he fell victim, when he felt himself going, he said he wanted the books to go to the center. Next one was a woman named uh, Mrs. Morgan up in uh, Ben Salem was going into a home for where she needed constant care. She made a, a large donation. Frank Kelly, who has since passed away, was a director of the uh, of the uh, AOH uh, County Board Officer. He he gave us a lot of books. So then we we were just still getting calls, but we have over a thousand books in here.